I wonder if there's any Proverbs 31 mothers in the house. See, I believe there are. I believe there's a lot of you that endure hardship, that you go through things that nobody else knows, and you, the only person you share it with is God himself. But I'm telling you, ladies, on your hardest day, look into the eyes of your children and know that your main goal in life should be for them to see Jesus in the end with you, with you, praying and believing God for great things. Last point, will it matter in the long run? 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, you, you all know this verse too. Did I say 2 Timothy? That's where it is. I was reading 1 Timothy going, that's not right. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, he's writing, Paul is writing to Timothy. I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois. How about that, Lois? Grandmother Lois held the faith. And also in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded is in you also. We don't know for sure. Many scholars, well, we do know Timothy's father was a Roman. He was not Jewish. Many believe he was probably a Roman soldier who married a Jewish woman, had a little boy named Timothy, might have went out of the picture, might have been killed. If he was a soldier, he could have been sent somewhere and was killed and never came home. We don't know. Paul kind of adopts him and says that spiritually, I am your spiritual father because I think there was an absentee father in that picture. But Paul writes, and do you realize that in the day this book was written, do you realize the place a woman had? Not much. This was a patriarchal system. If you didn't have boys, they'd get another wife. They'd get rid of you and get them another wife until they had a son because it was the patriarchs. It was the men. And Paul writes in the Bible and says, I thank God for your grandmother and I thank God for your mother because through them you have the godly hair that you have. Wow, that would have been unheard of to say something like that. Christianity upholds women, guys, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. Christianity upholds the value of women. All of what I'm telling you right here, talking about ladies. I'm not excusing men, it's Mother's Day. He didn't say the faith that was in your grandfather and then in your father because it wasn't there. Ladies, we need you. The church, Jesus, needs you to raise up like you never have. Your children will rise up and call you blessed if you will rise up and lead them. That's what we need. Men and young adults are abandoning the faith. It's killing our kids and it's killing our churches. But I believe this morning that women, godly women, mothers and godly mothers can turn the tide. Remember the stats we read earlier? The home is, in, the, home is the battlefield. We are walking the ways of countries who have gone before us and have fallen. And what makes this country great is Christianity. Constitution's a great thing. Constitution's a great thing. The Bill of Rights, wonderful thing. The Declaration of Independence, all good. We hold these truths to be self-evidence. That we are created equal. Created equal by our Creator. We have rights that are inalienable from God. That's how our Declaration of Independence starts. The only thing that makes that piece of paper worth more than just another scrap of paper is they knew God was involved in it. And the only thing that's going to matter in our homes today is whether or not this, this is nothing. What do you do with this? You, you can light fires with it if you don't believe it. 
Roll it up and stick it in the, in the uh, gas grill and light your grill. If you don't believe it, it's nothing but a scrap of paper. But if you believe it, because God is in it, it's everything. It's everything. We need some godly mothers. I wonder if there's a godly mother in the house. Is there one? Is there two? I'm going to ask every mother to stand up. I didn't pray. Did you notice after the verses? I never prayed because I'm going to pray right now for the mothers. If you're a mother, I'm going to invite you to stand, and I'm going to pray for you. At some point in time during this, mess, during this prayer, if it's your wife, if it's your mother, I want you to reach over and touch her, hold her hand while I'm praying for her. Would you do that? This is our closing prayer, and I'm asking God to speak to the mothers the importance that they have in making for a godly home. Men, don't take anything I said today to go home and say, hey, preacher took me off the hook, said it's your job. Not at all. It's our jobs. It's our jobs. Father, I thank you for mothers today.